Welcome to part 3 of this 5 part video documentary about butterflies. In this series I will talk about different butterfly related topics and if you want to learn about butterflies, I suggest you watch all episodes. In this third episode, I will talk about a butterfly's life cycle, egg, caterpillar slash larva, pupa, adult butterfly and the last topic today is pattern formation. Let's start with talking about life cycle. Life cycle. Butterflies in their adult stage can live from a week to nearly a year depending on the species. Many species have long larval life stages while others can remain dormant in their pupal or egg stages and thereby survive winters. The Melissa Arctic, Aeneas Melissa, overwinters twice as a caterpillar. Butterflies may have one or more broods per year. The number of generations per year varies from temperate to tropical regions with tropical regions showing a trend towards multivoltinism. Courtship is often aerial and often involves pheromones. Butterflies then land on the ground or on a perch to mate. Copulation takes place tail to tail and may last from minutes to hours. Simple photoreceptor cells located at the genitals are important for this and other adult behaviors. The male passes a spermatophore to the female, to reduce sperm competition, he may cover her with his scent, or in some species such as the Apollos, Panaceus, plugs her genital opening to prevent her from mating again. The vast majority of butterflies have a four-stage life cycle, egg, larva, caterpillar, pupa, chrysalis, and imago, adult. In the genera Coleus, Arabia, Eucloe, and Panaceus, a small number of species are known that reproduce semi-parthenogenetically, when the female dies, a partially developed larva emerges from her abdomen. Egg. Butterfly eggs are protected by a hard ridged outer layer of shell, called the corian. This is lined with a thin coating of wax which prevents the egg from drying out before the larva has had time to fully develop. Each egg contains a number of tiny funnel-shaped openings at one end, called micropolis, the purpose of these holes is to allow sperm to enter and fertilize the egg. Butterfly eggs vary greatly in size and shape between species, but are usually upright and finely sculptured. Some species lay eggs singly, others in batches. Many females produce between 100 and 200 eggs. Butterfly eggs are fixed to a leaf with a special glue which hardens rapidly. As it hardens it contracts, deforming the shape of the egg. This glue is easily seen surrounding the base of every egg forming a meniscus. The nature of the glue has been little researched but in the case of Pyrus brassicae, it begins as a pale yellow granular secretion containing acidophilic proteins. This is viscous and darkens when exposed to air, becoming a water-insoluble, rubbery material which soon sets solid. Butterflies in the genus Agathymus do not fix their eggs to a leaf, instead the newly laid eggs fall to the base of the plant. Eggs are almost invariably laid on plants. Each species of butterfly has its own host plant range and while some species of butterfly are restricted to just one species of plant, others use a range of plant species, often including members of a common family. In some species, such as the great spangled fritillary, the eggs are deposited close to but not on the food plant. This most likely happens when the egg overwinters before hatching and where the host plant loses its leaves in winter, as do violets in this example. The egg stage lasts a few weeks in most butterflies, but eggs laid close to winter, especially in temperate regions, go through a diapause, resting, stage, and the hatching may take place only in spring. Some temperate region butterflies, such as the Camberwell Beauty, lay their eggs in the spring and have them hatch in the summer. Caterpillar slash larva. Butterfly larvae, or caterpillars, consume plant leaves and spend practically all of their time searching for and eating food. Although most caterpillars are herbivorous, a few species are predators, spalges epius eat scale insects, while lysenids such as Lifera brassilis are myrmecophilus, eating ant larvae. Some larvae, especially those of the lysenidae, form mutual associations with ants. They communicate with the ants using vibrations that are transmitted through the substrate as well as using chemical signals. 
The ants provide some degree of protection to these larvae and they in turn gather honeydew secretions. Large blue, Fingari zarian, caterpillars trick Myrmica ants into taking them back to the ant colony where they feed on the ant eggs and larvae in a parasitic relationship. Caterpillars mature through a series of developmental stages known as instars. Near the end of each stage, the larva undergoes a process called apolysis, mediated by the release of a series of neurohormones. During this phase, the cuticle, a tough outer layer made of a mixture of chitin and specialized proteins, is released from the softer epidermis beneath, and the epidermis begins to form a new cuticle. At the end of each instar, the larva molds, the old cuticle splits and the new cuticle expands, rapidly hardening and developing pigment. Development of butterfly wing patterns begins by the last larval instar. Caterpillars have short antennae and several simple eyes. The mouth parts are adapted for chewing with powerful mandibles and a pair of maxilla, each with a segmented palp. Adjoining these is the labium hypopharynx which houses a tubular spinneret which is able to extrude silk. Caterpillars such as those in the genus Calpodes, family Hesperiidae, have a specialized tracheal system on the eighth segment that function as a primitive lung. Butterfly caterpillars have three pairs of true legs on the thoracic segments and up to six pairs of prolegs arising from the abdominal segments. These prolegs have rings of tiny hooks called crochets that are engaged hydrostatically and help the caterpillar grip the substrate. The epidermis bears tufts of setae, the position and number of which help in identifying the species. There is also decoration in the form of hairs, wart-like protuberances, horn-like protuberances and spines. Internally, most of the body cavity is taken up by the gut, but there may also be large silk glands, and special glands which secrete distasteful or toxic substances. The developing wings are present in later stage instars and the gonads start development in the egg stage. Pupa. When the larva is fully grown, hormones such as prothoracic atropic hormone, PTTH, are produced. At this point the larva stops feeding, and begins wandering in the quest for a suitable pupation site, often the underside of the leaf or other concealed location. There it spins a button of silk which it uses to fasten its body to the surface and molts for a final time. While some caterpillars spin a cocoon to protect the pupa, most species do not. The naked pupa, often known as a chrysalis, usually hangs head down from the cream master, a spiny pad at the posterior end, but in some species a silken girdle may be spun to keep the pupa in a head-up position. Most of the tissues and cells of the larva are broken down inside the pupa, as the constituent material is rebuilt into the omega. The structure of the transforming insect is visible from the exterior, with the wings folded flat on the ventral surface and the two halves of the proboscis, with the antennae and the legs between them. The pupal transformation into a butterfly through metamorphosis has held great appeal to mankind. To transform from the miniature wings visible on the outside of the pupa into large structures usable for flight, the pupal wings undergo rapid mitosis and absorb a great deal of nutrients. If one wing is surgically removed early on, the other three will grow to a larger size. In the pupa, the wing forms a structure that becomes compressed from top to bottom and pleated from proximal to distal ends as it grows, so that it can rapidly be unfolded to its full adult size. Several boundaries seen in the adult color pattern are marked by changes in the expression of particular transcription factors in the early pupa. Adult. The reproductive stage of the insect is the winged adult or imago. The surface of both butterflies and moths is covered by scales, each of which is an outgrowth from a single epidermal cell. The head is small and dominated by the two large compound eyes. These are capable of distinguishing flower shapes or motion but cannot view distant objects clearly. Color perception is good, especially in some species in the blue-slash-violet range. The antennae are composed of many segments and have club tips unlike moths that have tapering or feathery antennae. The sensory receptors are concentrated in the tips and can detect odors. Taste receptors are located on the palps and on the feet. The mouth parts are adapted to sucking and the mandibles are usually reduced in size or absent. 
The first maxilla are elongated into a tubular proboscis which is curled up at rest and expanded when needed to feed. The first and second maxilla bear palps which function as sensory organs. Some species have a reduced proboscis or maxillary palps and do not feed as adults. Many Heliconius butterflies also use their proboscis to feed on pollen, in these species only 20% of the amino acids used in reproduction come from larval feeding, which allow them to develop more quickly as caterpillars, and gives them a long lifespan of several months as adults. The thorax of the butterfly is devoted to locomotion. Each of the three thoracic segments has two legs, among nymphalids, the first pair is reduced and the insects walk on four legs. The second and third segments of the thorax bear the wings. The leading edges of the forewings have thick veins to strengthen them, and the hind wings are smaller and more rounded and have fewer stiffening veins. The forewings and hind wings are not hooked together, as they are in moths, but are coordinated by the friction of their overlapping parts. The front two segments have a pair of spiracles which are used in respiration. The abdomen consists of ten segments and contains the gut and genital organs. The front eight segments have spiracles and the terminal segment is modified for reproduction. The male has a pair of clasping organs attached to a ring structure, and during copulation, a tubular structure is extruded and inserted into the female's vagina. A spermatophore is deposited in the female, following which the sperm make their way to a seminal receptacle where they are stored for later use. In both sexes, the genitalia are adorned with various spines, teeth, scales and bristles, which act to prevent the butterfly from mating with an insect of another species. After it emerges from its pupal stage, a butterfly cannot fly until the wings are unfolded. A newly emerged butterfly needs to spend some time inflating its wings with hemolymph and letting them dry, during which time it is extremely vulnerable to predators. Pattern Formation The colorful patterns on many butterfly wings tell potential predators that they are toxic. Hence, the genetic basis of wing pattern formation can illuminate both the evolution of butterflies as well as their developmental biology. The color of butterfly wings is derived from tiny structures called scales, each of which have their own pigments. In Heliconius butterflies, there are three types of scales, yellow slash white, black, and red slash orange slash brown scales. Some mechanism of wing pattern formation are now being solved using genetic techniques. For instance, a gene called cortex determines the color of scales, deleting cortex turned black and red scales yellow. Mutations, for example transpose and insertions of the non-coding DNA around the cortex gene can turn a black-winged butterfly into a butterfly with a yellow wing band. This third video in this five-part video documentary is coming to an end, but in two weeks from now, the fourth part will be released with even more specific information about butterflies. Thank you for watching this third episode and I'll see you next time.